Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in and coming back. Hope you're having a great day wherever you may be. And today I'm going to talk about a black and white photo. I know, I'm crazy. Um, you probably, well, if you've seen my videos, you probably think, wow, he really likes his color. And I do. I love my color. Love. That's like L-U-V love. Um, however, there are times when I really want to do a black and white. And I hadn't done a black and white, um, actually a monochrome. Let's call it a monochrome. Um, I haven't done a monochrome in so long and uh, I've been thinking I wanted to do one and so I found a photo that I wanted to share with you and boom there it is. So this is Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris and I got up really early I mean oh dark 30 kind of early as you can see I had the place to myself um, but that's my final result. Now the photo started like that as you can see it's kind of yellow the light is coming off of those uh, street lamps um, which I was very happy about, by the way, because I love it when street lamps are illuminated. Um, otherwise, you could stick the sunray filter in each one to give it a little pop of light. It's a tip for you if you hadn't already thought of that. However, I didn't have to. It was already lit, and I'm thankful for that. So I had the place to myself, which you cannot do uh, at night unless you're coming at like 3 in the morning because there's always people there, and of course during the daytime. So I chose to get up at super early, get out, and here it is. So I started with that and I wanted to make a monochrome and that's what I made. So let me dive into the filters and we'll start talking about all the steps that I took and I'll see you in a second. Okay, I'm back. Thanks for waiting. Uh, so if you guessed that the first filter I used was a black and white conversion filter, bingo, you won. So uh, you didn't really win anything, but you guessed right. And so um, this is the black and white filter. Let me just turn that on. And obviously it makes a huge difference in the photo simply because the color's all gone. And the thing I like about black and white, well, there's a number of things I like about, uh, about black and whites. Um, and that is, um, I actually like the lack of color. It seems weird coming from a guy like me that loves big, explosive, kind of fun color, but I really do. But I also like when you can create sort of dramatic looking black and whites, which is really what I'm doing in this video. I also, the thing that I appreciate and do like, but mostly appreciate about a black and white for me is that when you have that sort of uh, what I like to call visual sugar, you know, the color pop, the blues and the reds or whatever your colors of choice may be. When that visual sugar is gone from the photo, you're really forced to look at the photo and say, you know, what do I like about the photo? Because you're not overwhelmed with, you know, the sensory like, whoa, boom of color. And so um, I like to look at a photo when it's a, a black and white or monochrome, whatever you want to call it. And um, I started looking at the, the lines and the shapes and the composition and things like that. And so um, another idea for you is sometimes when you're working on your photos, even if you're going to publish it in color or you only prefer color, maybe convert to black and white just to take a look at it because it may cause you to change things uh, that you would do. It may cause you to crop in a specific way and things like that. And so um, that's just an idea. But anyway, so yes, I started with black and white conversion. And as you can see here, I went fairly contrasty. I went as high as 73. Again, the number doesn't really matter, but I went really high because I was trying to get, you know, uh, well, let me just show you without the contrast. Ah, uh, you know, golly, Jim, what'd you do? Um, and that's because I have highlights and shadows so messed up. Uh, and by messed up, I mean artistically perfect. Um, let me show you what it was like with the highlights and shadows. There it was, right? as before I made the adjustments to highlights and shadows. And what I basically did is I took the highlights down and I took the shadows up. And so I created a very different looking photo in doing so. Also raised the blacks and added some clarity just to give a little bit of pop. So for me, the photo went from that, which is yellow and kind of yucky, uh, to that, which I think already looks nice. Uh, in fact, I think that looks like a classic, sort of pretty or you know beautiful, you don't have to call it beautiful, it's my photo. I think it's beautiful, but you may may not. Um, and that's okay. Um, but to me, it's a classic sort of beautiful black and white, sort of, um, I mean, just basic, for lack of a better word. It's not overly contrasty, it's not overly dramatic, it's just a simple black and white. And I think there's a, a beauty to be had in that. Um, so that's where I went with that. Uh, now, the next thing I did is adjustable gradient. So let me show you what I did. And very different distributional light. Let me turn that off again. So there's the before. To me, I look at it and the light on the ground is fairly bright. Um, obviously, that, that light's not gonna go up into the sky. They're not that strong of these, uh, these lamp posts or street lights. 
um, but they're, they're gonna get the light uh, across the ground pretty well, and you can see that they do. And since there's a line of them and they carry all the way through the photo, it really lights up the entire foreground because it's kind of going all the way down to the cathedral. But the sky is dark, the top of the cathedral is dark, and so with the adjustable gradient, I came in, I sort of redistributed that. As you can see here, I increased the exposure and the contrast in the top of the photo, and then in the bottom, I just upped the contrast, which actually had the uh, impact of making it a little bit darker. Let me show you. Before, right, really light over here uh, and all through the foreground and fairly dark up there, and then afterwards, um, much lighter at the top with some contrast, and then just that contrast adjustment in the bottom without adjusting the exposure. I think it helped to redistribute the light and also shine some light on the cathedral because let's face it, the, the focal point, the, you know, the thing I'm shooting here is the cathedral, so I want you to see it as a viewer. Uh, next was the tone filter. Let me turn that on. And you know, you might say, wow, that's a lot brighter. And, and it kind of is, but I didn't do a lot. I added contrast, I increased smart tone a little bit, but the big thing was I bumped up the shadows again. And so again, that's sort of just helping to redistribute the light. I just like to do that when, you know, I want my photos to, to look the way I want my photos to look, just like really anybody does, I guess, it's editing their photos. Um, and in this case, I really wanted that light to be more evenly distributed. So before and after. And the truth is, I could have probably just increased the exposure more on the adjustable gradient for the top, but I just like the tone filter. I wanted to add a little bit more contrast across the entire photo, a little smart tone, raise the shadows, and so that was the difference is I raised the shadows instead of raising the exposure, so that, that helped to brighten it. Let me show you that one more time. There's the before the tone filter and after. So we're getting somewhere. Now, what you are seeing or I'm seeing, uh, you may be seeing in the video, and that is I've got some noise in the sky. Now, I shot this at ISO 100 at F19. So F19, by the way, was primarily used because I was trying to get that starburst look in the street lights. You can see it over here and these in the bushes, that one there, and of course these guys uh, that are kind of big and prominent. Um, so that tight aperture allows you to get that little bit longer exposure and kind of that starburst or sunburst look to um, city lights. Also the ones over here on the left side of the cathedral as you're looking at it. Um, but anyway, I'm starting to see some noise because I brightened the sky so much. And also admittedly, I'm just using a JPEG. This is not a raw file. Um, that's why I don't have the develop filter and all that. So FYI, uh, I'm aware of the noise and there's a couple of splotches. I'm not playing with that stuff in this video. You know how to take care of that. Um, so. I'm pretty well off, I think, in terms of where I want the photo to be, generally speaking, with the light, but I wanna kinda get dramatic. And so, hey, dramatic filter, sounds like a good idea. So I add that and you know, boom, it gives it a bit more punch. And that's what I like about the dramatic filter. I actually don't use it enough. I think it's a great filter. I, I actually find myself not using it a lot of time and, and I wanna kinda like, you know, there's 50 filters. It's like everybody's got their list of favorites. Maybe you've actually created favorites by starring them in the filter menu, but um, um, I often will go through a photo and then think later, oh, I should have done X or Y, and I think that about the dramatic filter. So I used it here. I actually did think of it, partly because I knew this was gonna be a dramatic black and white. So if I can't even remember to add the dra dramatic filter when I'm creating a dramatic photo, I got problems. Anyway, so apart from all that, um, you also are probably picking up more splotchiness in the sky, which is partly due to the dramatic filter, partly due to me increasing the light level so much, and of course, partly me, uh, partly due to me using kind of a smaller JPEG. But let me show you one more time, particularly if you look at the front of the cathedral and the stonework uh, in the path uh, leading into the cathedral. I think they all pop quite a bit more, a little bit more crunch. And again, I'm going for drama, so I like that look. Ooh, okay, having fun? Hope you're having fun. Okay, I'm having fun. Soft Glow is my next filter, and I went fairly decently on that, a 66. Let me show you the before. If you look at the foreground here around the lights and some of the lights themselves, that's basically what it does. It creates a, a glow around the brighter parts of the photo. This was simply, for me, a mood enhancer. Um, I've gotten to the point where the lights are blown out. Because it's a, a dramatic black and white, I don't care, to be honest. Uh, I mean, they were kind of blown out anyway, but not as bad, especially this uh, first one, the big one there up front. 
but now it's really blown out. But again, I don't really care. To me, visually, it sort of anchors me and say, okay, you don't really need to look at that other side of the photo. I'm here and I can see the line kind of gently, not really curving, but it kind of looks like it sort of, um, cur well, not, what's, it's not curved, it's a straight line, but it angled, angled. It's a tough day, I'm having a tough time here. Um, it kind of angles towards the cathedral and I definitely want the, the viewer to be drawn to the cathedral. So I added soft glow. It kind of creates a little softness around that bottom uh, area. Let me show you again, sort of bef um, below the, the street lights or lamppost. And I just like it. So just a personal preference, no um, scientific reason. This is purely art. And if you're watching my channel, you probably already know more into that than I am the techie bits anyway, because I just want to make stuff that's beautiful to me. So I hope you're doing the same too. Now, image radiance, this is such a great filter. It's kind of the romance filter. It just adds that little, you know, what the French would call je ne sais quoi, right? That little thing that you don't really know what to call it, but uh, it softens it and kind of gives it a little romance. I don't know. This is the city uh, of Paris, right? So it's kind of romantic anyway. Um, but that's what I did with it. You know, I didn't really go, I took the brightness down, increased the amount. I might actually go a little bit more, maybe like that. I kind of like that now that I'm doing it and maybe lift the shadows a tiny bit because I don't want to just, you know, I'm I'm making it up as I go, folks. Um, I'm kind of having fun here. I think I might would do that. Let me look at the before and after. There's the before, way too bright uh, in the sky and all that, which I did purposefully because I knew when I did that, I wanted this guy to be brighter early on because I knew when I added image radiance, it would darken it because it creates that moodiness. And so I sort of planned ahead, if you will, make the sky brighter so that when you dark, when it gets darkened later with image radiance, it doesn't go totally black on you. Let me show you image radiance one more time. Boom, there. Uh, one more time, I just like image radiance. I'm just gonna keep clicking the buttons. Um, there you go, before and after. I think that that's a, moodier, um, softer, you know, it does undo a little bit of that dramatic filter. So you could come back here and say, Jim, I like that drama. Maybe I want a little bit more crunchiness and maybe you come over here and drag that a little more. I'm, again, I'm kind of making it up as I go. Um, but I think that's, it's looking the way I would like it to look. Um, and, and I'm mostly done. I just would add a vignette again, drawing the attention of the viewer to the cathedral. And so let me turn on the vignette. And I think that adds a nice little effect. If you notice, um, I added inner light and what you can probably tell, let me turn this off. There's the before vignette. And now look at the cathedral because the, you know, generally speaking, the cathedral uh, part of it is gonna be on the edge of the vignette. And you would think it would get darker, but um, I placed the center more over in this area so that things will, um, you know, there's so much light here that I didn't want the, um, center of the vignette to be the center of the photo because the center of the photo is basically a street light and it doesn't really get any brighter than that unless I was shooting the sun, which you're not at six in the morning. So I wanted to off-center the, um, the vignette and so when I did inner light, it helped bring back some of that light on the cathedral. So there's uh, the before vignette and there's the after. So that's really it. In fact, I, now that I've done that, I actually might do a little bit more just to create a little bit more drama and then maybe give it a tiny bit more inner light. Again, I'm just kind of fine tuning and playing and I do that a lot with my photos and if you don't, maybe it's an idea to try and that is edit your photo and set it aside, save the Luminar file um, and then come back later and just say, yeah, I like that, but I don't like that. You know, just mess around, keep coming back, iterate is all I'm saying. I, I often will edit a photo straight through and be done but there are many times when I'll take that photo and go back to it and say, yeah, but I didn't really, you know, I sat on it for a day or a year. Or, I mean, probably not a year. That'd be kind of long. Uh, but, you know, a day or a week or whatever. And then you come back to it and you're like, yeah, well, maybe my taste have changed or I had a different idea or something. So don't hesitate to sit on your photos because, um, you know, there are no art emergencies. You don't have to get it published right now. And, and believe me, I, I'm all about like, oh, man, I love this. I want to share it but um, I try to sort of ratchet myself back from my um, typical state of being hyper basically about my photos because I get all fired up. Because how do you not get fired up? I got a, what I think is a beautiful picture of Notre Dame. Um, so I want to share it, but I've been iterating so I haven't shared it. Um, one other idea, and that is maybe, and, and I haven't done this, but come take a look at the crop tool. Now, 
I slightly straighten this photo, but I might would come in here. Um, I think I'll keep the, let me see, the three to two aspect ratio. And you know, the challenge is um, I made a mistake shooting this. So I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna unlock this. I'm gonna go to free. I made a mistake shooting this. I did not leave enough space at the top of the photo for the top of the stuff at the cathedral. So in my cropping, I would need to really be careful about that because um, I don't wanna cut off the top of the cathedral and I definitely don't wanna cut off the bottom of the pillar or that shadow. In fact, I shot it so that I would have the shadow of that pillar there, but you know, I did end up with some extra space over here in the right, which I don't really care about. I actually think that I would maybe crop it to that let me see, it make sure I don't have anything from the top. And the reason I would stop there is because, um, oops, let me, uh, let me drag that a little bit to the right. And that's because if you look in this bottom right corner of the crop window, that's where the pavement starts and there's that gentle curve. And I wanna leave that in the photo because to me that's a visual cue that tells the viewer, hey, look here and follow that. And I don't know if it actually does, but let me hit done and we'll take a look at it. It's a, obviously a bit of an odd crop because I did a free crop, so the aspect ratio is maybe a little bit whacked. Um, but I think it's a little bit better. I took away some of the distracting stuff on the right-hand side, which included a couple of street lights, which for me are a little bit of a distraction because they're um, those pricks of light, I think your eye's gonna be drawn to that. You know, you're gonna see the shadow, but you're gonna say, ooh, light, you know, twinkly, shiny objects or whatever. And so cropping those out, I think helps. Uh, but I wanted to leave this uh, shadow here because I liked that because a light is coming off those street lights onto that pillar and therefore casting it in shadow so I captured the shadow and when I just now cropped I wanted to leave that stonework because it does do a gentle curve and for me it kind of my eye starts there I've got a column or that pillar and I've got that gentle curve and it kind of leads to the street lights which leads me to the cathedral and everybody's happy so I don't know I'm kind of talking but I like talking about this stuff let me show you the before and the after, very different, to me very dramatic, kind of moody. It kind of says, wow, this is really early in the morning or late in the night, there's nobody there, it's deserted, the light's doing some fun stuff, you got an amazing architectural masterpiece that you're staring at, and you know, I just hope that my photo does it justice. One more time, there's the before and the after. That's it, my friends, um, thanks for watching. I sort of got into an art talk here, and I, I hope you don't mind, I love to do that stuff. I'm just sharing opinions. It doesn't mean I'm right. I just talk about what I think. And uh, if you don't like it, that's okay. You don't even have to agree. But I do appreciate you coming by. If you like the video, please like the video, share it with your friends, hit subscribe. Just, just smash the crap out of that subscribe button. And then I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Take care, my friends, and adios.